This is Section 5, Commercial Refrigeration, Unit 24, Expansion Devices. Expansion devices are often called metering devices. Meter the correct amount of refrigerant to the evaporator installed in the liquid line between the condenser and the evaporator. Three types, thermostatic expansion valve, uh, automatic expansion valve, and a fixed bore. Here we have a picture uh, in figure uh, 24.2, uh, complete refrigeration cycle with the four basic components, the compressor, the condenser, the evaporator, and the expansion device. In this particular case here, this is going to be a TXV. Notice it's mounted on the liquid line and the bulb, which measures superheat on the uh, uh, evaporator line leaving going to, to the suction line is on the outlet side of the evaporator coil. Thermostatic expansion valve, better known as a TXV, meters the refrigerant to the evaporator by utilizing a thermal sensing element, which uh, is like an inert gas. <clears throat> Maintains a constant evaporator superheat. If the evaporator superheat is high, the valve will open. If the superheat ensures that no liquid refrigerant leaves the evaporator. This is a superior type of uh, metering device in refrigeration air conditioning systems. Low superheat increases the net refrigeration effect. Basically, more heat removal is what they're talking about here. The TXV uh, components are the valve body, the diaphragm, needle and seat, the spring, adjustment and packing gland, sensing bulb, and the transmission tube known as the capillary tube. Valve body is machine brass or stainless steel holds components all together, provides the means to connect the valve to the piping circuit, is fastened by flare, solder, or a flange fitting, uh, has an inlet screen to stop any small particulate matter from entering the valve. Some valves have a third connection called an external equalizer. The diaphragm portion of the TXV moves the needle in and out of the seat in response to the system load changes. Made of thin, flexible stainless steel located under the round dome top of the uh, TXV valve. Needle and seat. Control refrigerant flow through the valve made of stainless steel. Size determines the amount of the liquid refrigerant that passes through the valve under a specific pressure drop. Must uh, consider the conditions under which the valve will operate when selecting the valve. The spring, one of the valve's closing forces, raises the diaphragm and closes the valve by pushing the needle into the seat. The uh, spring pressure determines the evaporator superheat. The spring tension can be field adjusted, but only seasoned field technicians should do the adjustments on the valve. Normally, you do not adjust the superheat unless there's an absolute reason why it needs to be adjusted. Sensing bulb and transmission tube senses the uh, temperature at the evaporator outlet, converts to a pressure which is transmitted to the top of the diaphragm. The fluid in the bulb responds to a pressure temperature relationship. When the suction line temperature goes up, the bulb pressure goes up. The bulb pressure controls the valve. Here we have in figure 24.18, this is an illustration of the diaphragm and the bulb and the transmission tube. Basically, there's an inner charge in this uh, capillary bulb uh, area, and basically this is going to create a force which is going to act on this diaphragm, which is going to act as an opening force. So this is going to sense superheat on the uh, uh, suction line, uh, the line leaving the evaporator coil, and this in turn is going to create a uh, pressure differential based on the whatever is charged inside here in order to make this diaphragm move up and down. Types of bulb charge. The fluid inside the expansion valve bulb is known as the charge. Four types are liquid charge, cross liquid charge, vapor charge, cross vapor charge. Very important that you have the right valve for the right application 
Otherwise, the valve's going to hunt and it's going to create a lot of problems in controlling the refrigerant uh, load on the evaporator coil. Liquid bulb, uh, excuse me, the liquid charged bulb is charged with the fluid characteristic of the refrigerant in the system. The diaphragm and the bulb are not actually full of liquid. They always have some liquid inside of them. They may reach the high temperatures near defrost. Pressures inside the bulb causes excessive pressures over the diaphragm. Valve opens wide, overfeeding the evaporator. Cross liquid charge bulb contains different refrigerant than what's in the system. Does not follow the pressure temperature relationship of the system. Closes the valve faster on a rise in evaporator uh, pressure. The valve closes during the compressor off cycle. Helps prevent liquid from flooding over into the compressor at startup. The vapor gas charge bulb. Only a small amount of liquid refrigerant in the bulb. It's also called a critical charge bulb. At some predetermined temperature, all of the liquid in the bulb will boil until only the vapor remains. Any further increases in the bulb temperature will have to, no effect on the bulb pressure. Limits the maximum operating pressure of the valve, which will allow the evaporator to experience. The cross vapor charge bulb. Similar to the vapor charge bulb, ex except that it is charged with a fluid different than the refrigerant in the system. This creates a different pressure temperature relationship under different conditions. Three special, these special valves are applied for special systems only. An example of a TXV functioning with an internal equalizer. Based on a liquid full filled bulb, the normal load conditions are uh, medium temperature application, valve is in equilibrium, the suction pressure is 18.4 PSIG, R134A refrigerant boiling at uh, 20 degrees Fahrenheit, the expansion valve maintaining 10 degrees of superheat, the suction line temperature 30 degrees Fahrenheit at the bulb location, the pressure of the liquid in the bulb equals 26.1 PSIG, the spring pressure equals 7.7 .7 PSIG. Here we have the illustration here and shows you what happens. On figure 24.25, uh, the TXV under normal load condition, the valve is said to be in equilibrium. The needle is stationary. And when we're talking about the needle, here is the uh, needle right here. Notice that it is stationary. Notice that the um, Refrigerant liquid comes in here, and basically we have eight, we create the pressure drop here. And what happens is we're at 18.4 PSIG, we're at 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And we look at the loops around this evaporator, 20, 20, 20, 20, until we get to the last loop. Then it increases to 25 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. And notice that the pressure is still the same at 18.4. And over here, now the temperature changes uh, all the way up to 30 degrees Fahrenheit, where the bulb's located, 26.1 PSIG. This is the suction line going back to the compressor. Now, if this valve is in equilibrium, which this illustration clearly shows, the valve spring is at 7.7 .7 PSI. The evaporator pressure is 18.4. Combined push upward equals uh, 26.1 PSIG. Example of a TXV functioning with an internal equalizer load changes. Load changes with food added to the cooler. Addition of warm food increases the evaporator load. Load changes with the food removed from the cooler. Removal of food reduces the load to the evaporator, assuming that the door is closed. A TXV functioning with external equalizers. Designed and applied with a pressure drop from inlet to the outlet. The magic number on this is if the pressure drop from the inlet to the outlet of the evaporator is more than 3 PSIG, normally an external equalized valve will be utilized for this situation. Use to compensate for not get rid of pressure drops from the inlet uh, to the outlet of the evaporator. Always must be installed when refrigerant distributors used because the distributor's large pressure drop characteristics 
Excessive pressure drop will cause the valve to starve the coil refrigerant. So if you don't have the external equalizer hooked up, uh, you are going to have problems uh, with a starving evaporator coil. TXV response to load changes. When the load increases, refrigerant boils at a faster rate and the suction line temperature increases. Valve opens to feed more refrigerant to the evaporator. When the load decreases, refrigerant takes longer to boil off. The valve closes to feed less refrigerant to the evaporator. In the TXV selection, each TXV is designed for a particular refrigerant or group of refrigerants. Many newer TXVs are designed to handle newer alternative refrigerants and refrigerant blends. Be used with more than one refrigerant. Capacity of the system is very important. Balance port TXV is designed to operate in a low ambient condition used if any of the following exist, uh, conditions exist. Large varying head pressures, large varying pressure drops across the TXV, widely varying uh, evaporator loads, very low liquid line temperatures, have larger than normal orifices. Pressure limiting TXV allows the evaporator pressure to only reach a predetermined pressure. If the evaporator pressure exceeds this pressure, the valve will throttle and the uh, will excuse me. The uh, if the evaporator pressure exceeds this pressure, the valve will throttle the flow of liquid refrigerant. It will. Uh, it is desirable on low temperature applications, primarily refrigeration only. Servicing the TXV. Care should be taken care of when the valve is serviceable and uh, it will perform correctly. Things to be considered, type of fastener, flare, solder or flare, excuse me, a flange, location of the valve for service, expansion bulb location. The valve has moving parts that are subject to wear. Exact replacement is usually the best way to go. Adjust the TXV may cause problems. Installing the sensing element. This is kind of a sore subject with me. I've seen this done improperly in many jobs. Follow the manufacturer's instructions. The bulb should be mounted at the end of the evaporator on the suction line. For small suction lines, the bulb is usually secured to the top of the line. Recommended location for large suction line is near the bottom of the line on a horizontal run. The bulb should be mounted securely. In other words, don't use tie wraps. Use the uh, clamp or the hardware supplied by the um, TXV manufacturer to ensure that we have good contact. And don't forget that uh, bulbs are supposed to be mounted in a horizontal position. Stepper motor expansion valves. They use a small motor to control the valve port. The valve port controls the evaporator superheat. The temperature sensor sends a signal to the controller. The controller sends a signal to the motor. The motor in turn uh, turns a fraction of a rotation for each signal. The motor is powered by signals that change in polarity. This is also known as an EEV, electronic expansion valve. Stepper motor expansion valves controller functioning. The controllers consist of many transistors for each switching function. A small microcomputer in the controller has a program algorithm which can control the sequence to the electrical signal. Algorithms or sets of instructions often refer to this as software resides inside the microprocessor. Feedback loops um, let the controller know that the process needs to be changed or modified. Algorithms and PID controllers. Proportional controllers generate an analog output signal. Difference between the actual superheat and a superheat set, excuse me, superheat and superheat set point is the offset or error. Integral control mode, controller modes help reduce the error or offset, calculates the error size and length of time. Derivative is the differential control modes, uh, estimated slope or rate of change of temperature time on a curve. Automatic expansion valve. 
Meters the refrigerant to evaporator by using a pressure sensing device. Maintains a constant pressure in the evaporator coil. When the pressure drops, the valve opens. When the pressure uh, increases, the valve starts closing. Turning the adjustment screw on the valve increases the suction pressure. This is an, um, um, a picture of uh, 24.42. This is in your textbook. Automatic expansion valve utilizes the diaphragm as the sensing element and maintains a constant pressure in the evaporator but does not control superheat. So basically, you are going to use a screwdriver, a set of gauges, and you're going to set a constant pressure condition on the AXV. And of course, you have the ability, this is the internal workings of this, the needle and seat, rape liquid and vapor out. Basically, nothing magical about this, except that the superheat is not adjusted. In this case, basically, we are adjusting the pressure in order to control the superheat on the uh, evaporator coil. Automatic expansion valve response to load changes responds differently than the TXV to load changes. Actually acts in reverse when the load is added to the coil, the suction pressure uh, starts to rise. When the load is decreased and the suction pressure starts to fall, the AXV will start open, opening up and feed more refrigerant into the coil. Special considerations for the TXV and the AXV. Both are expansion devices that allow more or less refrigerant to flow. Both need storage device, a receiver for refrigerant when it's not needed. The receiver serves as both a storage tank and refrigeration system and as a tank to which refrigerant can be pumped when servicing the system. Capillary tube metering device controls refrigerant flow by pressure drop. Diameter or length of the tube determines the flow at any given pressure drop. Does not control superheat or pressure. Used when the load is relatively constant. No moving parts to wear out. Oil logging may occur. Too much oil, wrong oil, viscosity, flooding, or migration. Piston metering device functions similar to the capillary metering device, has a precision size hole bore through it, controls the amount of refrigerant uh, to the evaporator coil, has available in various sizes, can easily be changed by to a different size by the, uh, uh, excuse me, can easily be changed to a different size. Um, Piston housing can be open for cleaning, typically used in residential air conditioning and heat pump systems. Pistons are relatively easy to change, but it's really important you know where they're located. And I will point out that these pistons have a tendency to plug up if there is stuff in the refrigeration line. So when you take and um, add or do some work on a refrigeration line, make sure that you get all the debris out because this debris will definitely end up in the screen or it could end up in the piston uh, of the uh, metering device and cause a lot of problems. Charge, operating charge for the capillary tube system. Capillary tube systems are always considered critically charged. It means the refrigerant has to be weighed in. The amount of refrigerant in the system is critical to the capillary tube. Capillary tubes sometimes fasten to the suction line for heat exchange purposes responds very slowly to system load changes or charge modifications, often causes high evaporator superheats of 40 degrees or under 50 under high evaporator loads.